In this video, I'll share with you my top three favorite option strategies, as well as the strengths and the weaknesses of each one of them. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably know my favorite strategies and what they are, but today I want to dig in and give a few more details as to why I use these three option strategies. So here we go, in order from my third most favorite to my absolute favorite. My third favorite option strategy is to use leap options and turn them into poor man's covered calls. For those of you who don't know what the strategy is, briefly, a poor man's cover call position is one in which you own a longer term option that's in the money, and you sell a nearer term, shorter term, out of the money option. You know that if I buy options, I almost always buy leaps. Here's a real life example of a poor man's cover call that I entered two weeks ago in Apple. As you can see here, I bought the June of 2023 115 call option. That cost me $41.78 per share. And I simultaneously sold the 155 October 15th of 2021 call option that expires in 36 days. It's currently out of the money. For that, I received $2.09 per share. So if you run the math, see that I was able to take a bullish position in Apple for $39.69 per share. That's one of the advantages of doing a poor man's covered call. Here you see that on August 27th, we started this poor man's covered call position. Apple was trading for right at $148 per share. Compare that to the approximately $40 per share that it cost us to enter this bullish position in Apple, and you see one reason why I like trading poor man's covered calls so much. You can take a bullish position in a stock for a fraction of what it costs you to buy it outright. You can also turn it into a cash flow machine by selling near-term short call options against it. Those are two of the reasons why I really like doing poor man's covered calls. Since you're buying a long-term call option, time decay, it doesn't hurt your long option as much as a short option that you're selling. Here you see that the October 15th, 155 call option that we sold, it's losing about six and a half cents per share per day in time decay. Compare that to the Leap's June of 2023 call option that we bought, that call option only loses 1.4 cents per share per day in time value premium. So we're taking advantage of the difference in time decay because the near term option that we sold is losing time value four and a half times faster than the longer term option that we bought. The other thing I like about doing a poor man's covered call is that your loss is theoretically capped by how much you paid for that long term option. Here you see that if we had bought the Leap's call option outright and had not sold a call option against it, it would have cost us $41.78 per share. It doesn't matter how low Apple goes, that is the most that we can lose. The reason why I said theoretically it caps your loss is because of one of the two disadvantages that I see in trading poor man covered calls. Since these are options, they're not really deep in the money, they don't have penny for penny move up or down as the stock moves up or down. Here you see that the October 15th, 155 call option that we sold, it only moves about 51 and a half cents per share up or down as the stock moves up or down. On the other hand, the Leap's call option that we bought, it moves up or down about 81.9 cents per share as the stock moves up or down. Where this becomes a problem is if the stock goes way past the strike price of the near-term call option that we've sold. I've now added the 140 call option to this option chain here. We're looking at the option chain that expires in 36 days. If we had sold the 140 call option instead of the 155 strike call option, you see that this option's delta is actually higher than the call that we own. The delta for the near-term call option is 87 and a half cents per share. So it will actually move up in value faster than the long leaps call option that we bought. That's one of only two disadvantages that I can think of when it comes to trading in poor man's covered calls. The other disadvantage applies if you're trading in dividend stocks. You see, in order to receive a dividend, you have to own the stock, not a call option on the X dividend date. Since we are trading in options, you won't receive that dividend. So if receiving dividends is important to you, and you're trading in a dividend paying stock, a poor man's covered call will not be a good choice for you. I only trade poor man covered calls on non-dividend paying stocks or on stocks whose dividend is very small or almost non-existent. If you decide to trade on leaps options or poor man covered calls, make sure that when you place your orders that you set them as limit orders. You don't want to trade options using market orders like you will with a stock because the bid ask spreads can be quite wide and definitely wider than the underlying stock. My second most favorite option strategy is doing covered calls. Let me tell you why I like covered calls as well as the advantages and disadvantages of using this strategy. I like to invest in things that consistently generate cash flow and give me as little headache as possible. What I'm saying is that I like my income to be as uncomplicated as possible. I mean, life can be complicated enough all by itself. We might as well make our income as straightforward and simple as possible, right? That's one of the things I love about trading options so much. Once you understand how they work and trade them in a safe, well thought out way, it really can be a fairly simple cash flow machine. The only challenge then is coming up with new trading ideas on a regular basis. At the end of this video, I'll tell you where you can get some help when it comes to new trading ideas. I like trading covered calls because we can consistently generate cash flow every single month by selling call options against stock that we own. 
And for the most part, most of the stocks that I trade, they are dividend paying stocks. We like to get that double hit of income when we own a stock. We like trading in dividend stocks for quite a few reasons, but one of them is that the dividend is like an extra paycheck for us. Whether it's once a month, as is the case with Realty Income here, once a quarter, for example, how Apple pays their dividend, and then some stocks they pay dividends once every six months or some even once a year. But on top of that dividend, by selling covered call options against the stock that we own, we're creating a second form of consistent, and typically for me, monthly cash flow and income. If we are bullish on a stock, as you can see here in Realty Income, we don't necessarily have to miss out on the stock's appreciation either. If we feel bullish on the stock like we do here with Realty Income, we can always roll the short strike price near-term call option up and out in time. And when we do that, we almost always do that for a credit. Here you see the trades we've done in Realty Income over the past year. Notice that on two occasions, when we felt bullish about Realty Income's appreciation potential, we rolled the strike price up by $2.50 per share. As a result, even though we bought the stock at $65 per share and started selling covered call options at that $65 per share strike price, the call options that we are now short are at the $70 strike price. Because I still feel bullish about Realty Income's potential for future stock appreciation, as you can see here, I have an order sitting out there right now to roll the September $70 call option up and out to the December $72.5 call option. We're trying to roll it up and out by $2.50 while still pocketing $1.14 per share cash for this roll. Will we be able to get this order filled? Well, we don't know yet, but that's our goal. If we can't get a good enough return, then we'll just let Realty Income be called away from us. This brings me to one of the real disadvantages of doing cover calls. If you're very bullish on the stock, and the stock goes way past your short strike price, you're potentially missing out on a lot of stock appreciation. If you're really bullish on the stock, you can always choose to either not do covered call options or sell a call option that's pretty far away from the stock's current price. For example, let's go back to Apple. As you can see here, Apple is currently trading for $154.46 per share. If we felt really bullish on Apple, but wanted to collect a little bit of extra income, we could always sell the October 15th call option, which expires, as you can see here, in 36 days at the 180 strike price. That's more than 16.5% higher than where the stock is currently trading at. You wouldn't get much for that option because as you can see here, we'd probably get about 25 cents per share. So if you multiply that times the 100 shares that equate to one contract, that's still $25 we didn't have before. If you had, say, 1,000 shares of Apple, selling that call option would put an extra $250 into your pocket for that next month. And the likelihood of Apple going up to that point is less than 5%. So the odds are pretty small. If it did approach that price, then like we do with Realty Income, you could always buy it back and just close it out or buy it back and sell to open a new call option at a further date that's higher in strike price. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. Now we get to my number one favorite option trading strategy. I'll also tell you why I like it so much as well as the disadvantages of using it. Selling put options is my number one favorite option trading strategy of all time. Why do I love it so much? The number one reason is cash flow. Selling put options is a consistent way to get cash put into your pocket every day, week, month, and year. Typically, if you want to get paid, you have to go to work, do a job for somebody, and then receive payment for it. Not the case with option sellers. Yes, there is some real work involved in deciding which stocks to trade and what strike price we should be selling put options at. But once we do that, we get paid up front. What can you do with that cash? We can use it to buy some stock, to invest in some other asset, to live on, or even to take a vacation. You see, the cash is ours to keep. But can we sell put options at any stock at any time? The answer is actually yes, you can, as long as options are traded in that stock. However, I wouldn't suggest selling options on just any stock. I'm not saying that selling options is easy. But like many things in life, once you gain some knowledge and have some experience behind you, a lot of those things that were challenging at first, they become easier. Selling put options is no exception to that. I'm not saying that everyone's going to make money selling options because a lot of people won't actually be profitable. But if you gain the knowledge, have discipline, and consistently make wise, well thought out decisions, selling put options can certainly put money into your pocket, bull markets, bear markets, and even in sideways markets. I know I've been doing that for a long time. I won't go through all the trades for the past 12 months, but I just wanted to give you an idea about how much cash you can expect to make by selling put, covered calls, and doing some poor man covered call option trades. Here's the bottom line of a long series of trades that we've done over the past year. Today is September 9th, so from September 10th of last year to September 9th of this year, as you can see, we have pocketed a net of $136,566. 
And please remember that we don't use margin or leverage when we trade options. How will the rest of this year play out? Well, I don't know. But what I do know is that by using my three favorite option trading strategies, we'll consistently put cash into our pocket every single day, week, and month. If you'd like to go on this journey with us by receiving alerts of the exact option trades that we do when we do them, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down in the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more of our secret tips and tricks on how to trade options to generate awesome cash flow in return, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Trade Options Like a Pro. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.